Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new Dell XPS 17, and also the XPS 15. Here's one I made earlier. So you may have seen my comparison with the MacBook Pro 16. If not, definitely give that a watch after this. But I wanted to give the 17 here the proper full review treatment, as well as compare it to the XPS 15, as I know a lot of you guys, myself included, are wondering which is better. So just like the MacBook Pro video, I've bought both of these myself. These are proper retail samples, partly because Dell take forever to offer me uh, XPS review samples, and I want to bring you guys these videos before you may actually want to go out and buy them to give you a better idea. But also I wanted to match the specs as closely as possible to see if the upgrade to the 2060 Max-Q or the 8-core processor or, you know, the new vapor chamber cooling system makes that much of a difference. So if you do appreciate that and you do want to see more from me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the little like icon, ding the bell all those youtuber cliches that we all hate but you know it does make a difference so that would be awesome so let's get the specs out of the way first in the US it starts from just $1400 although that is with the full HD plus screen integrated UHD graphics and a smaller 56 watt hour battery then for 1900 you get the i7 a much bigger 97 watt hour battery and the GTX 1650 Ti graphics card however if you really want to get the most out of the XPS 17 then you're going to need to pay a thousand dollars more to get this guy and that gets you the RTX 2060 Max-Q graphics the 4k plus touchscreen alongside 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage 16 gigs of RAM does seem pretty stingy for that kind of money, although you can spec it with 32 or even 64, or I think what I'd recommend is actually upgrade it yourself. Both the RAM and the two M2 SSD slots are upgradable, so if you want to go for a lower spec and then upgrade it later, that's always an option. Now versus the XPS 15, the entry level model of the 17 with the same specs is actually only $100 more. But then at the top end, like this one here, it's $800 more compared to a similarly high end XPS 15. But let's put money to one side for a moment. And I'm sure you'll agree these are both stunning looking laptops. This really is just the bigger brother of the XPS 15. And I think Dell's refresh of the XPS lineup this year is pretty much one of the biggest I've seen in about four years. I mean, this proper edge to edge screen, they've got rid of the bottom bezel, the taller 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which I'm a huge fan of, as well as the bigger trackpad, richer sounding speakers, the fact that we get both a fingerprint reader and face unlocking, as well as the shift to USB-C only. And of course the upgrades on the inside with Intel 10th gen processors and faster 1650 Ti or 2060 Max-Q graphics cards. So the 2020 XPS laptops are genuinely a big upgrade. But the question is, is bigger always better? Well they both fit in my pretty standard North Face backpack, although it is a tighter squeeze for the 17 and I think with a sleeve or a case, I don't think it would quite fit in the laptop compartment. The 17 is also a fair bit heavier. Comparing the two with the bigger batteries and the touchscreens, the 17 is two and a half kilograms or five and a half pounds. So I think for me, as much as I do love the big screen on this and also the performance, which we'll get to in a second, the portability of the XPS 15 is more important to me. I mean, I already have a desktop PC at home, and so this is primarily my work laptop for when I'm traveling or going to tech shows and you know making videos on the road. But then again, if this is a proper desktop replacement for you and it's just gonna sit on your desk at home or at the office all day long, then you may as well go for the bigger screen. As you would expect though, the 17 and the 15 have a lot in common. The keyboard and the touchpad are exactly the same, which is no bad thing at all, I love using them, and that massive precision touchpad is incredibly smooth and responsive. The only difference really is we get this wider speaker grille flanking the keyboard on the 17. Now you may have seen in my MacBook comparison video the issue I was having with the 17 speaker. The good news is I have managed to fix it by uninstalling the Realtek audio drivers and then going on Dell's website and downloading the latest ones again. That did fix it, but it's not something you should really have to do for a nearly three grand laptop. Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and I've got two of the very best laptops you can buy, basically. I've got the new MacBook Pro 16 with the brand new, you can buy, basically. I've got the new MacBook Pro 16 with the brand new 5600M graphics card. That's both big improvements over last year, but still not quite up to the standard of the MacBook Pro 16. When you uh, turn the volume above, say, 80%, it does start to distort on both. So speaker quality is good, but not great. As for the webcam, well, we get 720p video from the uh, little camera that's on the top bezel. So at least it's not looking up your nose, but as you can see, the quality isn't fantastic. It's noisy, it's kind of dark, it's not the sharpest, so yeah, not ideal. And actually it is the same camera, the same quality between both the XPS 15 and the 17. So not great, but it'll do. 
Also, like the MacBook, Dell's gone full USB-C here. We get four Thunderbolt 3s and an SD card reader on the 17, compared with three and a card reader on the 15, plus a headphone jack and Kensington lock on both. But when you open up the 17, or even the 15, there's a real wow moment with that edge-to-edge -edge screen. And paired with the 4K Plus touchscreen, it's genuinely one of my favorite laptop screens out there. Now, interestingly, they actually have the exact same resolution, despite the size difference. It's 3840 by 2400. So we're looking at 260 pixels per inch on the 17 versus 291 on the 15. So it's slightly sharper, but not something you'd really see in real life. Aside from that, they're exactly the same though, with the same high color accuracy, which makes them great for editing, as well as 500 nit peak brightness, display HDR 500, and Dolby Vision HDR support. So obviously this is a little bigger, we get an extra USB-C port, but really the big difference between them is what's on the inside. Well, let's jump into a few benchmarks, and starting with Cinebench R20 versus the XPS 15, the 17 is 32% faster. In Geekbench 5, single core performance is almost neck and neck actually, but in multi-core, the 17 pulls away with a 28% lead. Then in Geekbench's graphics test, the 17 is a whopping 51% faster in OpenCL and 50% faster in CUDA. And then in the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark, the XPS 17 is 44% faster than the 15. But what about real world tests? Well, starting with a few games, and you can see the XPS 17 is significantly faster in all four. In fact, between them on average, it's 40% faster. So while both are pretty capable gaming laptops once you drop the res to 1080p, the 17 is a lot quicker. Plus, as the 2060 is an RTX card, we also get access to ray tracing, DLSS, and a faster NVENC encoder, which helps with video streaming. So you get a bunch of extra bells and whistles with the RTX card. More important for me though is video editing performance. So I've tested both of these in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve Studio. Scrubbing through the actual timeline in Premiere Pro feels pretty similar on both and they can comfortably handle 4K video. But what about export times? Well, with the same fairly complex 10 minute 4K project in Premiere Pro, the XPS 17 took 11 minutes and 19 seconds versus 11 minutes and 50 seconds on the 15. So it knocked off 30 seconds, but it's not a huge difference. Then in DaVinci Resolve Studio, the 17 was just four seconds faster than the 15. Although the real winner is DaVinci and just how ridiculously fast it is compared to Premiere Pro. I'm seriously tempted to switch. But I do think the 16 gigs of RAM may be a slight bottleneck. I'd spare core upgrade them with 32 gigs of RAM. So far then, the 17 is significantly faster in benchmarks and gaming and a little bit faster in video editing. Although as I say, I think 32 gigs of RAM would really unlock the full performance of this. But what about cooling? Because this is something the XPS series has struggled with for, well, ever really. So starting on the outside, and I actually found there wasn't that much difference in temperature. But then on the inside, running the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark, the 1650 Ti in the 15 inch peaks at 82 degrees Celsius versus just 73 degrees on the 17 inch with the 2060 Max-Q. That's pretty significant and shows just how good this vapor chamber cooling system is. As for the processor, with Cinebench and Core Temp running, both laptops had cores that peaked at 100 degrees Celsius. Although in the benchmark, the 17 inch dropped to a low of 2.92 gigahertz versus three gigahertz on the 15. That's despite a 300 megahertz higher clock on the 15. So relative to their advertised clock speed and along with the two extra cores, the 17 is just faster and also cooler. So that's a lot of numbers and figures, but the point is, the 17 with the vapor chamber cooling system makes a big difference over the 15. It still gets hot to the touch and I'm sure there's still some throttling, but you don't see it as quickly as you do on the 15. But I think what will be a really interesting test is to see the 1650 Ti in the 17 with the vapor chamber because I'm sure you get better performance in here than you do in here. So if you are gaming or doing regular high intensity workloads, then the 17 does make more sense but I did find the fan noise was exactly the same on both. The 17 didn't seem any quieter. And finally, what about battery life? Well, they both have two different battery options. Uh, I've got the bigger versions in these guys. I've got the 87 watt hour cell in the 15 versus 97 watt hour cell in the 17. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been testing these. I'm getting about six hours of use from the 17 and about five and a quarter or five and a half from the 15. So not a huge difference, but the 17 will give you slightly better battery life. So this XPS 17 review has definitely turned more into a versus video. But I think for me, as I say, the extra portability of the 15 kind of outweighs the extra performance uh, and also better cooling you get with the 17. Plus at the higher end, it's a good deal cheaper. So I think personally with my use case, 
I would go with a 15, but if you're a gamer, a streamer, or you know, portability isn't the number one factor for you, then the 17 is absolutely the way to go. And I really, really hope we see this vapor chamber cooling system in the next gen XPS 15s and maybe even the 13s. It really does make a difference. But what do you reckon? Which one would you go for between these two or just none of the above? Let me know in the comments below. As I say, if you haven't checked out my MacBook Pro versus 17 comparison, you can click the little pop outy thing wherever it is somewhere. I really hope you guys found this helpful. And if you do want to see more from me, then hit that little subscribe button down below. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.